Hey guys, it's Eric from Dehaven Camera, and uh, today we're going to do one of my first uh, color workflow videos. So, um, for about the last 25 years, I've been working in visual effects and color, um, and the camera house and, and my camera rentals is kind of a, a side project that's grown into a bigger business, but now that we've realized that we can join these two, um, I'm really excited to bring some of the workflows from the cameras that we rent into the post world and how we get them from acquisition to, to delivery. So um, we're gonna go through today just a real simple um, couple of tools that I really like to use when trying to balance for skin tones with color temperature. I think that's one thing that most people struggle with a lot. Um, and so I have a couple of neat tools that I like to use uh, and a couple of tips, so uh, we'll get through it right now. So I'm pulling up this video here this is one of our how-to videos we shot for the Ronin RS3. And as you're going to notice here, it's, it's the color temperature is a bit off. It's a little pink. Our blacks are a bit milky. Um, and the skin tones that I have here are not great. We've got, we're a bit ready and a bit weird. So a couple of the drawbacks of Resolve's just baseline setup is that our scopes aren't super detailed. Um, and this is something that in a pro environment, we generally use third-party scopes uh, like the Aja HDR or uh, Tectonics and some of these other higher-end scopes, but they're very expensive. You know, the Resolve scopes allow us to see most of the detail we're looking for, but one of the big things that it lacks is color picking values to be able to actually like pick a pixel and tell me where it is. Now, you can turn on, you'll see this little circle right here on the, uh, on the vector scope. And that works for your waveform. You know, you can see the general idea of where that pixel is, and that can be turned on in your uh, in your scope preferences. The issue is that's not detailed enough. It's not telling me exactly where that value is, and it's only while I'm hovering. So the moment I move the mouse away, the picker the picker leaves. So ideally, what I want is I want to have a value that I can select, and then I can make adjustments and see how it, it's affected. Now on our vector scope, the other thing that we run into, a lot of colors we run into, is that the vector scope on Resolve is, is really lacking detail. Um, while it shows us sort of the, the rough idea, it doesn't really give us this pixel accurate view of where things are in our image. So one of the tools I really like is a Nob Omniscope. Um, this tool is a very inexpensive uh, plugin for Resolve. You can use it in Premiere, a bunch of other applications, and gives you basically pro-level scopes um, as a software option. Um, and Tom, who writes this, is just incredibly supportive, really responsive to tech support. And I'll post the links and prices in the, uh, in the notes for the video. So what we're gonna do is apply this plugin right here and click Open Display. And you're gonna get a menu that's gonna pop up that's gonna say what application are we using and what are we gonna do with it. Now, the neat thing is, is that this scope can actually take multiple inputs. So we can take an input from our Alter Studio. We could take an NDI input, which is an output directly from our, uh, from our software, or we can just connect directly to Resolve. So there's a bunch of options depending on the level that you purchase and the, the, uh, the license that you get. But for this demo, we're gonna choose the Resolve version um, and move the timeline. And you'll see that I have my scope set up a few different ways. So this scope has so much power. There's many different things we can do. We can add waveforms. Um, we can look at sat versus loom, um, histograms, false color, as you can see above me. Um, a lot of different options, which are really helpful um, when working um, sort of at a professional level or trying to get really good detailed color. So one of the things that I like about using this is I feel that I have my waveform monitor over here um, in Resolve and that one's quite good, gives me my, my, the basics that I need to see. But in Node, I get two functions that I really miss in Resolve, which is my false color. Um, there is a plugin for that in Resolve. You can use that on your output. Um, though its color space is set to Blackmagic cameras. So you have to make a color transform into and out of that false color. So it's not super accurate for cameras like this was shot on the Sony FX30. So in this mode here, we can have a preset for our Rec. 709 output that gives us a nice little bit of false color. So that's a good 
I really like to use false color as a fast way to get to my exposure. So I sort of set a ground where I want to be for my skin tones and my middle tones, my highlights, my shadows, and that false color really allows me to get there quickly. The next one is my vector scope. Now vector scope is super key when we're working with color temperatures and skin tones because we need to be able to see where those values fall within this, this chart. Now this line here, this is what we call the skin tone line. That's generally where most skin tones, no matter what, um, how dark or how light your skin tone is, you're gonna fall somewhere around this line. So you may be a little reddish, you may be a little more green, a little more red, a little more green. Um, you may have a lighter tone or a more saturated tone, but generally it's gonna be within this line. So it's a good thing to be able to see that on your vector scope and resolve scope has that as well and you can turn it on in the settings. But for me, the most powerful thing is over here in my picture, I can actually pull up a picker and move around and we can see how that's reflected on the vector scope. But the neat thing is I can actually set it and leave it and now I have a tool here. I have a, a picker showing up on my vector scope that doesn't move. So how that works is really neat. What we can do is we can find an area in our clip where we see uh, a good, a good skin tones. All right, so now that we found a nice spot where we can see my face, see our skin tones, we can see this white wall, we can start putting color pickers in. So with the middle mouse button, we can delete the picker, and with Alt key, we can actually select it and apply it to the wall. So we know that this whiteboard is white, um, and we know that my skin tone right here is correct. All right, and we can also put another picker for our black values. So I'm gonna put these three pickers in here. Now we can see that this is black. You can see how it highlights to show me which picker I'm going for. So my skin tone is up here, my whites here, and my black here. So by looking at the vector scope, a pure white at our target um, color temperature is gonna be right dead center here in the middle of the vector scope. And our pure black will be right dead center. Um, and then our skin tone, like we said before, will wanna fall along this line. So right now we're quite saturated and we're getting a lot of tone into this white value. So now that we've applied uh, the node display and we've set up our color pickers, we're gonna go back and set up our color pipeline. So over here I have three nodes already in. So here I've applied our standard Sony uh, output transform a lot. So S gamma 3 Cine to log, uh, uh, S gamma 3 Cine to uh, Rec 709. Um, this is a base LUT that's included in Resolve and really easy to find. So we want to use this as our output transform, but we want to be grading in scene referred space. So what we call scene referred space is a space that's not dependent on the monitor. So if we're working with our grade here after the LUT, we're display referred, we're grading based on the display that we're looking at, if or making our grade choices based on the display. If we're doing our grade before the LUT, we're working what's called scene referred or camera referred, which means we're making our grade choices in a space that is um, defined by the scene, not by the display that we're working on. The benefit of this is that we can make these choices and then change our output transform to go to HDR, SDR, um, hybrid log gamma, you know, P3 DCI if we're going to theatrical. So for our different outputs, we can choose our output transform and not have to regrade the show. So as you can see here, I'm working scene referred. Um, we're gonna work in the camera referred space, which is uh, Sony S-Log3. And I've set up two nodes, temp and lift gamma gain, uh, so, or our brightness contrast controls. So I'm gonna go right to our temp control. And I'm gonna pull my scope back up here. and you can see that as I start making adjustments to my temperature, you can see how the vector scope starts to move around and our color temperature can be dialed right down to pure white. So as you notice by just making some small adjustments, I was able to move our color temp right down to white. And in doing so, because this was fairly well exposed with a, with a light that it was quite good quality, we were able to get our skin tones right down to almost the perfect spot in our highlights, right along the skin tone line. Now, looking at this, 
we can see that our black levels are just a little bit high. So I'm going to go into my log mode and in my shadow tones, I can start to make some adjustment here just to pull those black shadows back to neutral. So now what we've created is a baseline or neutral shot. So our mid-tone values uh, or my skin tone values are correct based on my vector scope here. And my whites are correct with no tone or no application of color to them. They're the, our baseline natural color. And our black tones are in the same place. All right, so now that we've created like that baseline neutral shot, um, we can now go ahead and add any sort of look or apply a little warmth to the shot if we need to. So looking at the shot, we could go and add a second node here and say, hey, I, I really think that maybe we want to add a little warmth to our highlights. So in this new node, this would be our creative look. I can come back in and with a little bit of tweaking here, we can move around. I'm using my highlight controls or my gain. We can look around and see if there's a little bit of warmth that looks quite nice. So I like right there. And then with a little bit of my gamma, we can pull back, get my skin tones back to on the skin tone line right there. We can move to our log view, make a little bit more warmth here with, with our highlights, and then move my skin tones right back where they should be, and then just tweak the blacks again. Now, if we wanted to say make the blacks nice and cool, we could see we can do that. We can cool those off and add a bit of a blue to them. And you can see how that color picker I've chosen is moving around and showing me where my values are actually going. So this is the power of a vector scope and a, and a quality vector scope that allows you to have these points of selection and see the results of your work while you're doing it. We're working with big studios or big productions in grading in the color suite. This is where we can be really much more accurate in our choices. Um, we can make scenes more consistent because once I've say, have set my skin tone right at this point, I can have all the shots try to always hit my skin tones right here and say my, my white color temperature could maybe always hit right here. You know, or let's say we wanna bring this a little less magenta and a little more into that warm zone. We could always have our, our highlights hit there. So by doing this, this gives me a lot more control and insight into the image that I'm working with um, and allows me to make some more of these fine adjustments that I really can't do just with the stock resolve setup. So once we've really applied a look to it, then we can come in and just add our contrast. So I'm gonna now go back looking at my, um, looking at my false color up here. We can now bring our brightness down to where we wanted it. Bring our gamma and contrast down um, and try to get that those skin tones right in that nice middle say 40 to 50 zone that we can see on here and then making sure that we're not clipping anywhere um, and that our highlights are, are right around that nice like in the false color pink to gray on that back wall and that basically gives us a decently balanced shot since we're going for more natural we're not adding a heavy look to it um, and we've been able to you know both view our exposure as well as our color temperature, skin tones, all with this this you know very detailed scope and without spending you know twenty or thirty thousand dollars on a high end scope. So that's a quick way to get to finding good color temperature and good skin tones with a, a neat little addition to your application. You know if you can't afford this tool um, and you're looking for an alternative, using the scopes within Resolve um, and using your vector scope to be able to color pick your values can still be done. We can still look at and see, okay, you know, is my, we can turn on our skin tone line here um, and we can zoom in to our scope uh, and we can see just with our color picker that we're pretty close, you know, our skin tones are right along that line and that our whites now are in that warm zone and our blacks are falling quite centered. So the tools in Resolve can still do the same thing, just without that accuracy and detail that Nob Display or Nob OmniScope can do. 
So I hope that video was helpful and you learned how to use a vector scope to dial in your skin tones and your color temperatures uh, and tools like Omniscope to be able to really dial in the shot quickly. Um, we'll put links to Omniscope in the notes uh, and thanks for watching.